parks and kites and people just fit together. A big part of Earth Hand Gleaner's mandate is connecting people back to the land through hand skills. Flax is the plant that linen comes from, and it's 100 days from seed to harvest. And once it's harvested, there is a lot of processing that's required. From Soil to Sky started off with research labs where we invited community members to join us in learning how we could make kites from what we were growing and finding in our local parks. But I just wanted people to be able to see these kites are made from materials that are all grown here in East Vancouver. We went to Oppenheimer Park, we brought our touring Soil to Sky road show and we invited the community members to learn to process linen with us. It was a lot of fun. The community there is really open and engaged and people were really genuinely interested. The most important thing, do not let twist travel into your fire supply. Karen Barnaby came out and showed us how to spin new spinners as well as helping experienced spinners improve their technique. She taught us a way of plying the string which made a really, really strong kite string for us. We went out to the Renfrew Ravine Moon Festival under the beautiful lights with the candle lanterns and the processions, and it was magical. And then the fact it was actually going to be Kite Line just blew people away. We connected with BC Kite Flyers Association, and Cal Ewan, Diane O'Brien, and Dan Kurahashi came out and assisted us at various points. This is a four foot diameter. Um, I think if we do 40 feet. So then, yeah. you're going to make a, just a yeah, tiny okay. one here. You pull what it, you're doing. and it automatically will fasten. Right, so, so we that's don't... what you're fastening onto the kite. Yeah. The mulberry bark we used to make paper actually came from down the street from Cottonwood Community Garden. After we harvested the fibers, we soaked them and then were able to scrape the bark off, cut them up into small pieces and cook them with soda ash ready for the next stage. When you pull it apart, this is how you know it's ready to beat. See, it's got like spider web effect, so you know it's been cooked enough. Catherine Shapiro, as an experienced paper maker, led us in the paper process. And then you have all these little stringy fibers crisscross each other when you make the paper, and that's what gives paper the strength. And then I just dab the backs, and this is just to make it release. Our paper was really widely varied in quality, so we sorted it and we also had to weigh it to make sure that the left side of the kite would be the same weight as the right side of the kite. We ended up using materials we never would have thought to explore. We made hide glue by boiling rawhide till the collagen comes out. So that it is um, Looking good. Like Almost right. Bamboo is pretty amazing as a material. It's fast growing and splits nice and straight, and you can make lots of awesome things out of it. So this, for instance, is not good. Actually, one. Flying a kite is, is great, but actually making the kite is even better. There we go. And best of all is when you make a kite out of materials that you've grown yourself. Does that have to be flipped? Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. Not too many years, but yeah. Okay, so you think my second one should be after the end of this one? Wow. Oh! Love the berry seeds in there. Our project started in May and carried on until November. We were outside and working and trying to fly kites in all kinds of weather. We put the, we put the wrinklies out of the way. It's beautiful, it's resourceful. Uh, you learn to how to create and, and utilize things that you've made with your own hands. Okay, you want to go ahead and get that?
I learned skills. I learned paper making skills with fiber. I learned how to make glue. I didn't even know you could do any of these things. So um, making paper, I didn't realize you could do just from, from fibers and letting them dry in a certain way. Um, spinning fibers as well, like spinning flax. That was totally new to me. We'll get the lines on here. We were working hard. We worked as quickly as we could to piece all that paper and get a big sheet and then get everything put together to make the body of the kite. We have grown the bamboo, we have grown the flax, and we have turned the flax into paper, we've turned the flax into string, we've made the bamboo into kite frames. People had a chance to put their individual messages on the kites. There were some really lovely conversations happening, some wonderful pairings of people who wouldn't otherwise cross paths. They're fantastic. You could increase the space a little bit. I had my doubts. I'm trying to imagine what the kite line is going to be like. I'm trying to imagine how it could all possibly come together. So I was delightfully surprised and today to sum everything up was just a wonderful thing to do to actually see it come to fruition. Way down here. Really the most important Perfect. legacy of this project is how it has built Go. and bolstered our community. Woo! <laughs> nice, nice. Wow. We actually got a kite made from seeds we planted two years ago in the air in Vancouver on the 5th of November. We flew a kite that we made. It was very exciting. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. I feel honored to be a part of this. It fosters stewardship, I think, and that's really important. We took what we learned to the Pacific Rim Kites Festival as well, and we're able to show professional kite flyers what our kites looked like that were made from the land. People thought it was a fantastic project. They were quite surprised by what we'd managed to accomplish. There we are. It was really fun watching a bunch of adults oh. run around oh. through a park with kite lines trying to get kites to launch up into the air. Okay. I think that there's a space in everyone's spirit that's touched by watching a kite fly. <laughs>